hi, we're in the next part now. Please go check out the, uh, check out the previous part. I was speaking about the travesty of Darwinism and how it is that uh, its survival of the fittest strategy is based, frankly, on what a person has materially, albeit not having any true character. I also spoke about how it is that the wicked um, genuinely uh, actually desire to be good, but they don't have... They've got too much greed and self exaltation and delusions of grandeur to humble themselves to worship under a god because they want to be gods themselves just like their father the devil for those reasons despite having a true uh, despite having a true genuine desire to actually truly be you know traceability matrix mapped to their character their hearts their deeds be mapped to at the content of their hearts despite that being a true desire they nonetheless quiff current it in exchange for cooing the true righteous how it is that this ultimately works itself out is that society ends up crumbling um, at the seams it falls apart because the wicked are respected at the expense of the righteous and one of the biggest reasons why the righteous get disregarded or overlooked over the wicked is because of their life conditions it is because of their circumstances many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers him from them all these afflictions sometimes look like poverty they sometimes look like a woman living at the back of her mother's house in a shack at the age of 38 they sometimes look like a woman who is yet to be married at the age of 38 and so therefore she appears to be unmarriable she appears to be something that was rightly passed up uh and so what's there to marry it's over for her right and so men just like walk right by me glide right by me in the spirit of your 38 really i'd much rather go for a 28 year old or a 23 year old it looks like no money it looks like a packed up car it looks like no respect it looks like having no uh what is this laptop when you're in dire need of one so that you can do your youtube edit it edits it looks like bad quality videos albeit the content of the that that, that that um video being high it looks like squalor and so when a person is placed that in and of themselves is quite valuable in an invaluable or in a valueless environment or ecosystem because this world is as classist as it is they then go and underestimate the entire human being whereas the scriptures and this beats me to a pulp black and blue frankly because people who profess christianity should know better than that due to the fact that the scriptures make it clear that what we are is treasure in jars of clay so we know from the get-go from the onset from reading the word of god that christians will sometimes come cloaked in poverty in rags in garments that aren't you know queenly or priestly or kingly they will come with bad hair they will come with illness with alopecia they will come with bad skin they will come with bad um like treatment by their ecosystem they will be persecuted christians will come with a prison cell around them because they've been arrested for their faith or whatever they will come in a lowly squalified position that is underestimatable by those who are fleshy carnal who love this world and the things of the world the pride of life the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the boastful pride of life they will be disregarded because they don't have the pride of eyes the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the boastful pride of life the things of this world however the bible made it clear that don't love the world or the things in this world for they are all passing away so when you call yourself a christian and you underestimate a a, a, a believer a christian that is coming in the lowliness of my particular ecosystem you are not reading the bible you have got a pamphlet some skinny little thing that you call the bible that all passing through with little seriousness even with little concern for the words they're in they don't but jump out at you from the pages when you read the scriptures you are building your house upon the sand and in so doing that you will inevitably unfortunately very much for you then follow after these random charlatans out there that it is written of that you will gather for yourself a great deal of them to teach you what your itching ears want to hear because you will not endorse sound a doctrine it is a trait characteristic of the life last days that people will not endure sound doctrine and having itching ears they will gather for themselves a whole bunch of these ornate shiny youtube channels that are pleasing to the eye and so you click on this person because they've got an excellent thumbnail because they had all this software they had all this um what is this like technology to basically wow you and don't get me wrong there are christians true believers who have worked really hard on their youtube channels and over time they have improved their editing techniques and they've got you know and they're actually doing really well and their backgrounds are great they've got speakers mics and entire studios to do the work of the gospel excellent hallelujah they turn on the living god but there are there there are 
others. There are people in this world who click on videos on social media only based on what it is that the, the uh, likely quality of the video looks like. You follow this individual because they appear to be established by God and blessed by God because they've got a studio from which they record because their name is Alan Parr. Like, I love Alan Parr. He's not the problem. The problem is in people who will only listen to him because he has established his ministry and gotten to a point where he can do that. It is that then that causes people on the ground to refuse to support or help the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ that are still struggling and on the come up when the Lord has called us all of us who are in him and chosen all of us who are in him that we might do a work and what we are doing is equally important in the sense that people need to hear because God has set apart Karabo to speak a certain thing that perhaps Brenda on the left and Peter on the right has not been given to give even though they're both disciples so if you listen to only Brenda and uh, so only Brenda and half of Peter's message and nothing of Carabos because Brenda had a great studio. Peter was, you know, had a catchy thumbnail and Carabos just came from this dull, bland environment and she had multiple parts. She's loquacious. She keeps on talking. I want it nice and succinct because I'm part of the TikTok generation that is injected with dopamine addiction. You then are going to miss out or despise the prophecy that this individual in the center is bringing. Unfortunately, however, not only is all of Peter's work be, uh, um, being disregarded, all of Carabo's work and Brenda gets hurt. There are also people that aren't Brenda, Peter or Carabo. In other words, they're not believers that are being hurt purely because they, they, their ministries look so good or their ecosystems look so good. It's shiny, it's ornate, it's sparkly, it has a bling thing going on about it. And for those reasons, you are listening to them. And this is what gathering for yourself a great number of teachers what, to teach you what your aging ears want to hear. I keep on hearing in the spirit deposited in, into me by God, people saying of me, God doesn't care about her. Why? Why would anybody say that of me? They would say that because my life is hard. I'm living in squalor and I've lost everything. Literally everything I had, I've lost it. I am this woman that has got great potential and yet nobody's even trying to expand on it. I am ostracized, abused, closed out and isolated. And that is the reason why apparently God doesn't care for me. Literally your Bible is a pamphlet. It is a skinny little thing, skinny little thing that has got one or two pages so deep and even then words don't bounce out from that little pamphlet because the Bible made it clear that if anybody wants to live a life in Christ, they will suffer persecution and that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him from them all. And that when we suffer, we partake in the sufferings of Jesus Christ, that um, great is our reward in heaven when we go through these things. For um, in the same way our forefathers suffered, in the same way as we did, blessed are the persecuted, that we should not consider it strange when we go through trials of different kinds. That this is the basically portion of the disciple to go through it. You disregard the martyrdoms of old. The fact that all of Christ's disciples, except for one, died a martyr's death. John at Patmos didn't die a martyr's death. The rest of them did. You you take out the component of Christianity that has been explained to us as a fact of our work, as our walk. The persecuted part. That everyone who wants to live a life in godliness will suffer persecution. Every last one. So to disqualify me as a child of the living God based on the squalor that I'm living in and the sorrow is to basically ignore a whole chunk of your Bible. If anything, my life confirms the scriptures. It validates that I am in Christ. The prophecies of the Lord about how your life is going to look when you are a disciple have been fulfilled in my life. Power has been restored, as you can see. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, charge only. Uh, because I've been speaking throughout the power cut. I finally prospered. The, what you're hearing in the back there is a fan just going and going and going. That was off. This, this situation that I am having to survive like this to a point where I overcome a power cut by rapping on like this. This is what it means to conquer, to trample serpents and scorpions underfoot and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us. I am more than a conqueror and I am an overcomer because I went through a very depressing power cut by giving the gospel and yet I'm underestimated. Next part.